okay i should uh, mention here in that the original proposal of uh, the inu satellite port envisaged a series of groins here and also a pair of training wall here unfortunately that <coughs> never found its way and it was never implemented at all so that was the original uh, uh, proposal so unfortunately we have we had to live with this uh, coastal erosion here till we had the grinds in place and then the sandbar formation here there is still a problem of sandbar formation there and which would uh, of course need uh, the training walls as we have already seen okay then we just move on to when while i was explaining about this problem this there is a river here which is called as kuam this problem is also several decades old there had been similar to the coastal erosion at rayapuram this was also there for quite uh, some time and this is the location the details of which are shown here this is the chennai harbor and you see that this blue color and you see its configuration it, it uh, flows into the city of chennai plus we you have yet another river which is the adaya river which is flowing here south of kuam river this adaya river also flows into the flows through the city let us concentrate on this the existence of the southern breakwater of chennai port and its interception of longshore sediment transport moving towards the north that is the problem which we have already seen so there was a groin so there was a among the so you had the you have the uh, uh, breakwaters of uh, chennai port which is creating the sandbar formation which also we know that is not the only cause that is a major cause but there are other issues also the tidal range of chennai city is only of the order of 0.75 meters to 1 meter and uh, there is not enough flow also in the in the river so all these things adds up so you have on one side the accumulation of sand from the longshore sediment transport and on the other side there is not much of flow and there is no proper maintenance of the river what do you mean by proper maintenance of the river if the river is getting shallower it has to be dredged so that you have sufficient depth so that the water can easily exchange maybe during monsoon when there is significant flow in the river then this gets flushed off so this uh, this is a bit uh, rare maybe in the month of uh, october or november you may see that the mouth is open but most part of the year this is closed and only if you have the tidal prism that is tidal prism is the the tidal range in the ocean quite high then you say you see significant amount of water <coughs> moving into the oh, um, river and then bringing all the filth from the river back to the ocean so this is what is called as your tidal flushing so there was a groin put here somewhere i mean a training wall but that was not sufficient it started bypassing and then you had sand accumulation 
we will come back to that later and this is what is uh, mentioned here as some few points what exactly is the problem. So, look at the some of the pictures wherein uh, your uh, formation of the sandbar in process there is a small portion of the uh, uh, there is a small portion of uh, the mouth which is open actually the width of the river is so much this is a closer view. So, you see the sandbar sandbar also starts very close in this location. So, a groin on the southern side of the mouth of length of about 170 meters up to a depth of about 2.5 meters at an angle of about 30 degrees was subjected was proposed as you can see here you see those two because this uh, these are supposed to be this is for the vehicle which carries the boulders to turn okay nothing else and this is not uh, so you look at the cross section that was adopted the cross section was 1 ton and then uh, inside the core layer inside the core layer it was around uh, it, it was around uh, uh, 100 kg. For such a grind the top level is also very important here the top level was adopted as plus 2.5 meters plus 2.5 meters. There was also some uh, uh, I mean uh, additional uh, uh, protection measure which uh, that was suggested by another institute you know all of you know NIOT that is National Institute of Ocean Technology which had an arm something like this which was never which did not go through, but in spite of this groin this uh, I mean in, in spite of this uh, training wall the construction of the southern training wall took place around the month of November. Is that a right time for us to construct a training wall along the coast along the coast where the littoral drift is in this direction. We are talking about the Chennai Po, Chennai, where the littoral drift is towards the north, and you have the river flowing, and then you want to construct a, a grind like this in the month of November when there is a sand transport in this direction. This is the net sand transport, as I have said earlier, okay, and also. January to May and June to September, but then October to December it is going to move in this direction. So, the whole thing got blocked. So, this is a during this time it would have been wiser if they had started the northern groin okay so that was a the problem then uh, the top level of the groin was fixed as plus 2 2.5 meters the original proposal was something like plus 4 meters the top level If the level is uh, less, what will happen? The suspended sediments which are moving will also automatically deposit here. It is not really going to serve as a 100 percent barrier. Even when the sand is moving in this direction, it is supposed to when it is supposed to intercept the movement of sand, since its top level is only plus 2.5 which is much less less 
then what will happen the sand will go the, mostly the suspended sand will go and deposit here. Later we will uh, be seeing the phenomena of wave run up over topping etcetera at that point of time you will appreciate all these things these problems. All these aspects have to be considered when you want to fix the top level of any structure is that clear. So, these were some of the problems and then uh, what we had suggested is a pair of groins again the northern groin should be shorter than the south and uh, no piece no piece wise solution. This kind of a problem if you face you have to solve it in total. There is no point in saying okay, I have this much fund this year I will construct this training wall next year I will construct this training wall. You have to treat this whole thing in total no compromise on the crest elevation the top crest elevation has been raised something like a plus 4.5 or something like that I do not around 4.5, but the details have to be worked out ok. This is based on our experience with the northern groins that is the groins which we have proposed for uh, which we have constructed for the north of uh, uh, north of Chennai harbor. The length of the Grinds should be finalized only after numerical as well as physical model studies. The proposal is the northern grind can be extended up to a water depth of 4 meters with the top with the crest level of 4.5 meters and the southern grind will be certainly longer and it will extend up to a water depth of 6 meters. Why 6 meters? Because of the huge sediment transport that is taking place in the direction of north has to be intercepted. It is not so easy to handle this much of sand. The only way to improve the score is to prevent sand formation here. And the other problem is and the another thing is initially you do capital dredging and although you have a permanent uh, kind of a, a permanent uh, measure still periodical dredging has to be carried out. You cannot escape from periodical dredging because of the huge uh, sediment uh, sediments that is moving along this coast. Why the 6 meters? When you calculate the surface, the breaker depth will be approximately 2.5 meters during monsoons. During monsoon means during the period or during the month of June, where you have maximum sand. So, maximum sand movement along the east coast of India would be around June to August and that is the time you have to be very careful or when you are planning a structure you have to have this in mind. Later you will see that when you calculate the breaker depth it is approximately around 2 to 2.5 meters. And further when you do the calculation on the sediment transport distribution along the surf zone, you will see that even beyond the surf zone you will have still some amount of sand moving. So, whatever sand is moving have to be trapped that is the basic principle and that is the reason why you have to raise the top level and then trap all the sediments here and keep dredging. One more aspect is to consider having a pit ok 
okay something like a sand trap here wherein the sand will come and deposit here and then have pumps and then have pipelines wherein you can throw the sand on the northern side north of the northern breakwater what is this this is a combination of hard structures that is the training wall plus a soft solution with dredging and nourishing the beach that is getting eroded. So, in this way you can solve the sandbar formation, but at the same time you need to keep following the maintenance dredging now and then at periodically periodically you need to uh, uh, do the maintenance dredging and this will this is expected to give better results but all these informations need to be carried out or before implementing it has to be verified both numerically as well as experimentally so these uh, these are some of the pictures which uh, you see here this is the uh, marina beach and this is the sandbar so the width of the width of the river is here so so much of sand has accumulated so during the tsunami you see that this was one of the good thing that has happened because of tsunami this was the only good thing that happened during tsunami that is all, all the rivers or estuaries were kept uh, got opened Ah, this is Adair river which is south of Guam. So, here again you see the uh, uh, sandbar formation and you see that this was the sandbar formation has been removed by the ingress of the tsunami. So, this is uh, this is one kind of a solution for such kind of a, a problem which we had discussed. So, you can this is somewhere in the Danish coast this is assume that this is our river Kuom. So, you have a straight beach I mean straight uh, groins. So, one shorter groin and one longer groin. So, you assume that this is uh, the side of marina beach. Okay. You, so, you look at uh, the variation of the shoreline. So, you can have one more grind here there is no harm in it. So, that this can be used as a small marina if you want and then in order to tackle this problem they have a series of offshore detached breakwater. In our case I, I did not mention to you we had again suggested small grinds grind field because uh, we are more comfortable with a grind field because it is easier to construct shore connected structures okay so almost uh, and uh, this can be still be used for some kind of uh, uh, load out uh, facilities etc so these are this is a concept which i just uh, uh, wanted to show you because this can be we can kind of a, a, a duplicate the same kind of a, a scenario. So, many of the coastal engineering problems you will see that it is almost similar only the magnitude might be different. So, this I have already explained about the existing south groin is to be up to a depth of about 2.5 this is not enough 2.5 meters so you we need to extend so you can just read it uh, on your own there is not much of uh, whatever i have said is uh, available in this uh, uh, slide i will not go again and uh, whatever suggestion we have made for the river kuwa the same kind of suggestion can be implemented for the adaya river also So, then we move on to further south of Chennai city 
So, this is Chennai city we just moves further south. So, this is Chennai and we moves further south and what is this is a place called Mahabalipuram and which is a, a tourist place and whenever we have a, a particularly the tourists from abroad it is a must for them to see this a temple. It is the famous rock temple of Mahabalipuram. It is believed that there were about a seven rock temples similar to the one which you saw earlier. As uh, decades rolled you see that all this six temples have already gone into the ocean and one fine day you saw uh, we see that there is only one temple and that had to be saved on a war footing. How do you save this uh, temple? So, this happened sometime uh, around uh, mid of 70s. What they did is initially they did a mistake in uh, construction of a groin not taking care of the direction of lateral drift, the same problem. So, when they were, so they started off with a pair of grinds, but this grind what happened? When there was an northerly drift, there was a very severe erosion along this area. So, I do not want to go into the details of uh, the problems that was created, but finally what uh, was happened, what happened was that this had to be enclosed by a rubble mound, you call it a sea wall or you call it as groin, you, you understood the structure was supposed to take the shape of groin, it was supposed to perform the role of a pair of groins. Then finally, it was decided to close this also and then they started reclaiming some of this land and now you see that the size of stones they were uh, that was adopted is as I as some of five tons stones. So, if you visit this temple you will see large amount of boulders all around. Out of a desperate situation this temple had to be saved. So, on a war footing they had to use four five tons of stones I mean individual stones to protect it. Now, the temple is in its position. And we do not have much of problem for a simple reason only thing is this oscillation of the shoreline on either side has become a routine. Okay. It is not a monotonous oscillation, it is a seasonal oscillation and it is not really very drastic. So, we can live with that kind of a problem. As I said earlier uh, this should have come under a tsunami, but anyway since uh, it has already come here I will just uh, uh, tell you during the tsunami you would have seen that when the, uh, you would have heard or if you have not heard see usually this is the beach. Okay. During the tsunami the initial thing is the water level went up to this. Okay. There is a fall or the water level went more towards the ocean exposing 
significant portion of the land. I will elaborate on this later and this may be even 1 kilometer even up to 1 kilometer of land was exposed. During that time you see the relics of uh, the old temples being exposed. This has appeared in the Hindu during the all of you know that Hindu is a newspaper coming in Chennai. So, during that time this was a beautiful photograph that was uh, uh, released in the daily. Okay. So, what did we see so far? We have seen a man-made man problem of Chennai coast. Then what we saw now Mahabalipuram was a natural problem. It is caused due to nature. There was no construction there. Now, we will go a still further south again we are go this is Chennai, this is Chennai, somewhere here is Mahabalipuram, and then somewhere here is your Pondicherry. I am just showing you the it is not to scale or I am not showing it any kind of a, a map. The lecture is just to make sure that things are clear, I mean the coastal process are clear that is much more important. So, you can always check for uh, check in the net, go and google it and uh, google for it and uh, check for the locations. Sand bypassing in Pondicherry, Pondicherry is used to be a French colony. Now, here, so this is along the east coast. So, naturally, the sand is moving from south to north. What happened here? You have a southern breakwater, look at this breakwater, and there is a small northern breakwater in order to take care of the movement of sand, and there is a harbor here a small harbor. So, the vessels come and go this is the entrance this itself is used as a as the approach channel. Okay. And uh, this is the main city. So, what is the problem here? The problem is the advancement of the shoreline on the south and erosion on the north similar problem. Unfortunately, the eroding area is the heart of the town whereas, this area where you have beach that is not that thickly populated. It is a village it is not populated at all it is a forest something like a forest. So, we have the position or the beach formation in that location, but we have erosion along the city. So, what we did is what we had in mind is to dredge the quantity of sand that has formed here and nourish the beach which is called as this is a classical example for artificial beach nourishment. So, the total quantity of sand to be bypassed was estimated to be uh, uh, 0.4 million meter cube that is during the period of March to October. Okay. Why March to October that is the time you will be having erosion here and that is the time when you keep receiving sand on the southern side take this sand throw it on the north side. 
So we also has uh, we also propose two trial grinds in order to uh, check somewhere here in order to check how much would be the quantity of sand that would be retained. For any project of this nature you need to at least initially verify using a numerical model followed by some experimental model I mean the physical model and then go into the field. So I will just skip this slide it is not so important. The government has built sea wall using boulders of 0.5 tons to 1.5 tons for a length of 6 to 7 kilometers along the north side. But in, in many places along the uh, sea wall, the seabed below the sea wall eroded due to severe erosion. Try to recollect one of my earlier presentation, we saw a, a restaurant going into the ocean. Uh, that is this location. After studying the merits and demerits of different types of coastal protective measures, a groin field with artificial beach nourishment is was proposed. The artificial beach nourishment was carried out in the year 2001. The Pondicherry Port Department was carrying the, uh, it is not ease carrying, it is uh, 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 the Pondicherry department was carrying out the dredging at the inlet channel of the harbor using sand pumps and dredges. So there were pipelines laid, I will explain about this project. In the original project around mid 70s itself, the original project encompassed A artificial beach nourishment, but it was only in papers in the report, it was never implemented. When we took the report and looked at all the possibilities, then we decided that the project can be revived. And when we investigated, we saw that there is a submerged tunnel here constructed already and it was in its place below the seabed, below the river bed. So only thing what we need to do is have pumps to dredge the quantity of sand, lay some pipelines across and then pump this sand. This is what we did in 2001. So you look at the process, this is the pipeline you see here and this is the submerged tunnel, you cannot see it is below the, uh, so you just, uh, this is the uh, offshore breakwater, that is the southern breakwater and this is the northern breakwater. So here you can either call it as grind or jetty or whatever because it is also serving as a river training plus it is also guiding the vessels. So when we did that, you look at this sand bypassing, after the sand bypassing has taken place, before the sand bypassing this was the situation. On the same location in October 2002, so the sand bypassing had taken place at, that is to the extent of about 0.4 million meter cube per year. and. This is what you see at different locations along the, the effectiveness of artificial beach nourishment. So look at this point, this is the same location. This proved that artificial beach nourishment did work. So the erosion and uh, erosion and uh, uh, accretion is estimated to be uh, from 86 to 2002 over a period of uh, 16 years with the satellite imagery using GIS software. 
the rate of erosion was found to be about 4 meters per year and the accretion about 6 meters per year. The extent of erosion on the northern side was about 33 point around 34 hectares compared to the accretion on the south of about 30. Still there is a kind of a deficit, you understood. So, uh, this uh, example gives you what is meant by artificial beach nourishment and once you do it perfectly there should not be any problem, but when do you have the problems? Because now there is no problem concerning the supply of sand, you know that the supply of sand is going to be continuous. And it is better to do this when there is more amount of sand getting accumulated, so that you can easily nourish the other side of the beach. What happens if there is a severe power cut, or if the pumps are not working, labor strike, you understood? What will happen? It is not like you close the shop today and tomorrow we can open, no. If that happens say for a one week or one month, if the pumps do not work, then you have other problems. What the, the, comp, the capacity of the pump will be very less in order to handle the cumulative amount of sand that is going to come along that you need to answer accelerate, but then and at the same time the erosion rate of erosion also will be quite uh, uh, significant. So, these are all some of the problems, but on the whole this is a very clean uh, job and you are not destroying the environment aesthetically it is a very good, uh, very good uh, way of protecting your coast. So, you under any doubts any of you? See prior program you see that it is around uh, 6 meters per year beach width. So, it can even go up to about uh, 10 meters per year every year 10 meters of uh, you, you can imagine 10 meters of land uh, going into the ocean. And you look at the, uh, there are so many inhabitants who are residing along the coast. In spite of this problem, you have a lot of people living and you cannot blame them also, because their livelihood, livelihood is only based on fishing. They would not, you cannot ask them to go, because they, are, they say that they have prepared to take the risk, you understand. So, the, the, those are uh, socio-economic uh, aspects which, uh, which we will not uh, discuss in this uh, course. So, all the while we have been looking at problems, man-made nature problem, nature due to nature alone. Then we also had this harbor problem being solved using artificial beach nourishment. Now, the sand has also given us some positive aspects like for example, Marina Beach. So, now this is uh, again along the east coast of India, somewhere here where the major river drains into the Bay of Bengal that is uh, river Godavari. So, Godavari is uh, written there. So, what happened was when the sand is moving along the north, once it gets trapped slightly, then it keeps on trapping sand that is moving along. This I already explained about when I, when I was telling you about the spits in one of the earlier classes. So, as years progress, because the net drift is in this direction, you see the growth of the spit. Spit is nothing but 
the accumulation of sand due to which the strata becomes harder and harder and harder. Ultimately, it becomes something like a barrier. Okay. So, you see that this has grown all the way. What does that mean? That means nature or the movement of sand has given us a natural breakwater. It has given us a natural breakwater because this area, something like a bay with a natural breakwater, can easily serve as a harbor. But you might still have some problems from waves which are approaching the coast in this direction. If you want to have your vessels berthed here, so you need only a small length of breakwater here in order to take care of that, that problem. What is this port? What is this port? Huh? Kakinada port. So, this port is called Kakinada port. Okay. You understood how this can be the formation of say so, so this is a satellite imagery in 88 and 89. This is the Kakinada Bay, and now it is a, a port. Okay. Typical formation of uh, spits. Okay, and then I will. Uh, I think probably if I take the because I am in between because that might take some time. Okay, I'll try to finish this. Shall I continue? No problem. So now we move on to Orissa. And we are talking about Chilika. Chilika is Asia's biggest brackish water lake. Why it is brackish water lake? There is a good amount of salt inside the lake. For the simple reason, there is a very good exchange of sea water with the lake. And the livelihood of the people surrounding the lake is only fishing through fishing. So, you look at this uh, small strip, you see here, can you see this? There is a small gap here. Earlier, there was a, a gap somewhere here the original mouth was somewhere here, wherein the whole uh, somewhere, somewhere here I think probably, somewhere here probably. So, you had lot of exchange of sea water into the Chilka lake, but that got close and uh, the spit grew on and then it has reached something like this. How will the sea water propagate into the Chilka lake? It has to because of this sandbar, there is no exchange of uh, sea water from uh, sea and the lake. So, the sea water has to travel through this uh, narrow channel in order to have the exchange. On the other hand, fresh water flow due to monsoon also flows into the lake. So, both sides you have problem with the lake. One side salt water is not coming inside, but the other side you have fresh water coming in. So, what will happen to the brackish water lake? So, the PPM I mean the salt content will go down. So, how to restore this lake? So, the idea was to cut, uh, uh, cut open the bar or the spit. And how do you cut the width of about 200 meters for a length of about 300 meters to increase the velocity of to about 
1 meters per second. This was the idea, this was of course done using numerical model. So, numerical modeling can give all this kind of information. Once that was done, in addition to that, so this is the new mouth. In addition to that, there was a, a dredging taking place here in order to have free flow of the sea water. So, this is the cut taking place. So, now you see that the location where the cutting is going to take place with using a dredger is shown here. This picture shows the straight cut, all these things are this is the a spit, this is the straight cut, the dimension I have given already. So, the dredger is in operation, now it is dredging here, cutting the thing and now we have achieved some kind of a, an exchange between this and this. Now, you see that the sea water flows into the Chilka lake and now you see that the seal Chilka lake is connected and look at this, look at uh, uh, the height of the spit, it's quite something like a small hillock. So, regular monitoring was taking place inside the lake to find out what is the salt content etcetera. The salt content improved, the fish catch also improved. So, for all these details, I suggest I suggest you visit uh, 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 Chilkal Development Authority through Google and you then get all the information concerning some of these problems also. And now you see that the straight cast was established or executed in September 2010, 2000, uh, September 2000. So, 